Permaculture from the words permanent and agriculture or culture is about designing sites that support human life without destroying the environment. Based in Freeport at the corner of La Cuesta and Freeport Todd's Road to be exact is an organic farm that was designed to conform to the rules of permaculture. It's a very holistic um, approach to designing a site so that you don't just look at your site just for the food or just for the water or just for the energy, you look at it in everything so that on your site you're trying to grow all your own food, you're trying to harvest as much energy as possible, you're trying to catch as much water as possible and use it for different things. You're trying to conserve nature, trying to increase biodiversity. Ul Rahman Narutha is the director of Wasamaki, which is a permaculture farm. The name of the farm is Wasamaki Ecosystems, and Wasamaki is actually a Swahili word. Um, it's two words, Wa and Samaki. It means from the fish, so Wasamaki Ecosystems is an ecosystem based on fish. Fish are very important to life on this farm. The second part of this is the fish is actually linked to all the plants that we produce so that the waste from the fish or the ammonia that the fish produce gets converted to nitrates by the bacteria that grows in the water. And then the nitrates feed a lot of the plants so that we can actually produce food from water that would we normally just dump that would have too much nitrates in it. So that by doing all of this here we're actually introducing a lot of people to the concept of connections within the environment and connecting fish to your food and how all of that happens. This is Wasimaki's aquaponics system. Aquaponics is the organic version of hydroponics. The plants are grown in water, but as Il explains, no minerals are added. The water is passed through an array of plants, including lettuce and dashing to the fish. In this case, decorative koi and edible tilapia, and back to the plants in a cycle. And while the aquaponics system on Wasimaki is very complex, you can create a simple decorative pond in your own home that doesn't have to take up a lot of room. Okay, so this is just an example of what someone with very little space can actually do in their backyard to encourage wildlife. Okay, so birds will actually come and drink water from here during the dry season. Um, frogs, which are very important to the environment because they keep down a lot of the insect pests, can actually come and lay their eggs in here. And by having a few fish in there, a few guppies, you actually keep down the mosquitoes. So by doing all of this, um, it's a great way of actually teaching children about how plants interact with the water, how the fish interact with the plants. Um, and it's a good way of having a mini ecosystem in your backyard. There are several ponds on the property. This is the largest. It's 100 by 100 feet and about 12 feet deep. It keeps the farm hydrated in the dry season and it's replenished in the wet. Disaster management or planning for catastrophes is essential to permaculture because you're trying to live in communion with your environment, with your community. And the reality is that bushfires happen, dry seasons happen, pretty larceny is also a threat. You need to have plans in place to address those concerns. Permaculture can take a bit of getting used to. There are natural or not too natural disasters to contend with. In the 16 years the farm has been under Earl's care, every year they've had to deal with bushfires. This has been one of the worst in terms of damage because over 10 acres of cedar, flowers and other plants were destroyed. But it's been five weeks and already signs of life has returned to these singed parts. So perhaps the best argument for a permaculture lifestyle is seeing nature heal itself. Sony Gray for the CNews Environmental Report.